We've already discussed Japanese Super Mario Brothers 2. For my money, well... Mierda. Thank you, Rick. If you watched the last video, you'll understand why I say that. If you didn't, then what the heck are you doing watching this one? Watch that one right now! Japanese SMB2 was kept inside of its native country due to its ludicrous difficulty. Because of this, Nintendo had to get another game they developed and make it a Mario game. But now let's discuss the background of the game they picked. In 1987, while Japanese gamers were still punching the walls because of their version of SMB2, Fuji TV was holding a summer festival in Tokyo and Osaka to promote its new shows. The Dream Factory 87 extravaganza was additionally promoted by Nintendo through a tie-in video game called Dream Factory Doki Doki Panic, starring the event's mascots, Imajin and his family. They entered a dream world to save a pair of kids who were captured by a green claw and face off numerous weirdos along the way. Among the crew for this game were SMB1 director Kensuke Tanabe, composer Koji Kondo, and Shigeru Miyamoto himself. When Nintendo of America refused to import the Japanese SMB2 to the United States, Doki Doki Panic would get a graphical overhaul and become a Mario game. It would be released in Japan again as Super Mario USA. One night, Mario has a dream about finding a staircase leading to a land called Subcon. Subcon is terrorized by a group of ruffians called the Eight Bits. Mario is needed to defeat their leader, a vegetable-hating monster called Wart. The next day, Mario goes on a picnic with Luigi, Peach, and Toad. Soon the party finds a cave with a staircase from the dream. They enter the door, and the game begins. If you don't believe me, let the title screen play for a few seconds. You know I can only play as Mario or Luigi in Lost Levels? Here, you have four choices. Mario, Luigi, Toad, or Peach. Mario is the most balanced of the four. Luigi is the highest jumper. Toad is the fastest at running and picking up stuff and Peach can blow in the air for 1.5 seconds. As you can imagine, the Indo-Arabian atmosphere of Doki Doki Panic was retained, along with the game's enemies. Shy Guys, Tweeters, Snippets, Kabombs, Ninjis, and more. You can't beat them just by jumping on them in this game. You'll need to uproot vegetables and toss them. If you can't find a vegetable, use another enemy. If you find a power block, you can throw it to be all enemies touching the ground. After being a certain amount, a heart will float to replenish your health. Yes, this is the first Mario game with a health meter. Want to increase your health meter? If you offer the magic potion and throw it, a door to subspace will appear. If it came down to the right spot, you can find a mushroom to increase your maximum health. Uproot grass in subspace to get coins for the slot machine bonus where you can play for one-ups. I have no advice for the slots aside from mash buttons and pray that the first symbol will be a cherry. Speaking of cherries, they're scattered throughout most of the levels. Collect five for a star man, but be warned. If you're playing World 7-2, They'll show up in the walls, where they're barely accessible. That drawback aside, Starmen are easier to find in this game than in the previous one. You get new bosses to fight as opposed to a string of phony Bowsers. Bomb chucking Mausers, fire breathing Triclides, the annoying Fry Guy, and Claw Grip, replacing Doki Doki's Panics with their Mauser battle. This game also marked the debut of staple Mario character Birdo. And uh-oh, we've entered into some controversial territory. In the instruction manual, it says that Birdo was a gender-confused boy who wanted to be a girl named Birdetta, in spite of the fact that he spits out eggs. Whether or not the character is a boy or a girl has become the major point of interest about the character. In the commercial for the Japanese release, for instance, 
Roberta was depicted as a male crossdresser. Later, the gender mystery became a whole side quest in Captain Rainbow. But Nintendo's official stance nowadays is that Birdo is a girl. Except for the occasions where it's played for laughs. It's something we like to call a retcon. You know, where stuff that happened in an earlier part of a fictional work is either corrected or ignored. Batman using guns? Never happened. Superman having a team of Kryptonian animals? What animals? Kessel being a prairie plant with big beagle-like fungi? You're thinking of little Kessel. Regular Kessel is a barren rock with almost no atmosphere. Retcons. Gotta love them. And we'll discuss another one very soon. But let's move on. At the end of World 7-2, you fight Wart and feed him with vegetables. You know, the one weakness he has, and he had the foresight to bring them into the very room you fight him in. When he's out of the way, you release the captured subcons from a jar. Then, they carry off Wart's corpse and detonate it, I guess? Then it's revealed that this whole game was a dream Mario was having. So, he dreamed about the first dream and the picnic, too? Man, this was the first Inception. Eventually, they did fight Wart again in BS Super Mario Bros. USA where it turned out that Subcon was real after all. Not a lot to talk about in regard to that, apart from collecting gold Mario statues in a radio drama to accompany the game. What else is there to talk about in regard to this game? How about secrets? Hidden warps can be accessed in subspace, and you can take a shortcut straight to the end of World 6-3 by going down the quicksand a little. Music? Koji Kondo's score, as with the previous game, is great. In fact, did you know the overworld theme was extended? Compare this part of the Doki Doki Panic version. Now the Mario version. The game would later see a 16-bit port with Super Mario All-Stars, and would eventually get an update as Super Mario Advance for the Game Boy Advance. SMA had some new stuff tossed in, like more hearts to earn, bigger vegetables and enemies, and even sound clips. People often like to hate on this game because of the sole fact that it was a leap to Doki Doki Panic. But you want to see someone who thinks it's the best Mario game out there? That's right, Miyamoto himself. As far as he's concerned, the reskin is with more fun experience than lost levels. Others at Nintendo shared similar opinions.
What? Much more interesting than the vegetable theme BS and SMB2. This is the worst Mario game I've ever played and possibly ever will. Just as much of a shame to Mario as Hotel Mario. Japanese SMB2 might be the pinnacle of the entire series. You masochistic, tasteless Philistines! You actually think Lost Levels is a good game? No! It's crap! What about this? What about this?